Welcome to this video tutorial of the MQJMS Spring Boot Starter Library. We are going to show you how to connect to an IBM MQ server from Spring Boot. If you have missed our previous video about MQ9 running in Docker, make sure you check it out because we are going to reference it as we go along. So here is what we are going to prove today. As you can see from this diagram, we have the IBM MQ server in the middle with a request and response queue which we have already created. On the left hand side we have System 1, our Spring Boot application. Here we are going to show how to place a message on the request queue. We are going to hit System 1 via the REST call for simplicity. The general idea is that we pretend to place an order for a generic online store. So when the order is placed by the user, System 1 sends a message to the warehouse for processing the order. What we are going to show you today is just the first part where System 1 places a message on the request queue. We may do a later video on how to listen to a message and respond, but that's for another day. Create a Spring Boot app. The first step is to create a Spring Boot app, or you can simply download ours, which we have already created and we are going to leave a link in the video description below. In the pom.xml, you can see all we really need is the MQJMS Spring Boot Starter dependency. We have also added a Spring Boot Starter Web dependency for the REST controller. The second step is to add the configuration properties. As you can see, we have added the default configuration for the MQ server. This is just the queue manager, the channel you are connecting to, and the connection string with the port 1414 in between brackets. The username and the password, well, we could tell you some horrible stories about those, but for now, let's just say that it's best to declare them even if you're going to whitelist the server connections. By the way, if you want to check out more configuration properties, you can see a list of those at the IBM MQ JMS GitHub repository. We have also provided this link in our project readme file. Now let's look at some code. We need to add the at enable JMS annotation to our Spring Boot main file to allow discovery of methods annotated at JMS listener. Over to the order controller now, you can see we have auto wired the JMS template. So what the IBM MQ Spring Boot starter does is to create a JMS template with the properties we have configured in the previous step. So the connection is really super simple. Looking at the create order endpoint, all we have done is to specify an order request model with an attribute called message and another called identifier. This identifier is set as JMS correlation ID so that we can recognize a reply to our message. Now we can use the JMS template convert and send method to send a message to the queue order.request. Now it's time to start the application and check it out. We have provided a docker compose file which references an image we have built locally in a previous video. As you can see, all we need to do is start the container. Then we just run our application from IntelliJ for convenience. We are going to use Postman to test the REST controller we have created. So in the URL we need to specify the orders endpoint, ensure the headers are correct and finally we can write our message. When we click send, we can see the message has been accepted, so we can go over to the MQ web console and check the queue. Yes, we can see it there, and we can also see the content of the message. So far so good, but how can we retrieve the message from our Spring Boot app? If we go back to our order controller, we can now specify a new endpoint to find the order from the order.request queue. We can now pass the correlation ID we specified earlier and use a selector expression to fetch the message we are interested in. Bear in mind, some bytes to hex conversion is necessary to fetch the JMS correlation ID correctly from MQ. So the JMS template dot receive selection method will find the message and we can return it as a JSON response. Back to Postman, Let's send a new message with correlation ID order ABC123. Now we can use the find order endpoint with the correlation ID in the request parameter. And here is our message. 
So we have proven we can send and fetch messages filtering on the JMS correlation ID, which is a pretty common use case. We haven't really looked at System 2 listening for messages, but that is fairly simple and can be done in a later video. Let us know if you enjoyed the video and please subscribe for more content.